Welcome back guys to a new PvP build for the newest update 43 on my Magda this time. They changed some stuff around on Wardens, the biggest change is probably the first one about the passive person code. Before it was, if I remember correctly, 14% overall more damage increase with an eye stuff slotted. Now they sadly reworked it into this. If you are above 30 HP, you will gain 12% block mitigation. If you're below 30 HP, you gain 8% more flat damage. Now every single warden in PvP nowadays will have at least 35 HP, most even over 40 HP. So we only gain little block mitigation, but we we'll lose 14% damage done compared to the old person code. That's sadly a really, really big nerf here. Second change is about Arctic Blast. Yes, they changed it again. The healing happens only if you fail damaging enemies with the initial hit. Otherwise, it will not burst heal you anymore. On top, they reduce the healing by 11%, reduce the dot damage by 21%, reduce the cost of the ability, and change some stuff with the status effect chance. Overall, probably not worth it anymore, especially a solo player. You definitely need a consistent burst heal. That's why I swapped it to Polar Wind, should solve the problem. Arctic is probably only worth a group play or for one on one situations. Next up is not Warden related, but very important in general in PvP, the nerf the Vampire Undeath passive. So before it was up to 30% damage mitigation, now it's only up to 15%. This is a huge but necessary nerf for Vampires, that's the reason I purged the curse for now, but need to still test some stuff around, not sure if the Undeath passive is still worth it. But now let's take a closer look on the build itself with the new Warden class set, Ares Cry. Dealing damage of a light attacker plus Eagle's Mark to your target for 12 seconds. Eagle's Mark causes an Eagle to attack your target every 3 seconds after a 3 second delay. Dealing physical damage per attack. The tooltip is really really high here. Per hit it hits around 2.5 to 3k plus. It can even crit. Huge burst damage. Applying Eagle's Mark grants you Ares Call for 12 seconds. Increase the damage done with animal companionabilities by 10%. So Deep Fissure and the Growing Swarm in this case we get empowered by 10%. But only on the marked enemy. Downside of the set, you can only apply it on one enemy at a time. The cooldown is kinda weird. Let's say you have two opponents, you light attack the left one, after 3 seconds delay, the eagle appears and will obviously hit the target. If you light attack the right enemy afterwards, it will swap this effect to the next target obviously, but the proc cooldown resets, means even if you light attack, let's say 2 seconds after it got procced on a previous enemy, it will take always another 3 seconds on top to hit the next marked target. So actively, if you have multiple targets, the cooldown can be more than 3 seconds. Second set is Pariah. Now, like I said before, I purged the Vampire Curse means we are missing a ton of mitigation. Even with the new Undeath passive, it still gives up to 15% damage mitigation. Pariah gives a ton of armor. Even if full life, we have already 5k armor, which is around about 7-8% to damage mitigation. And Pariah is probably the best defensive set out there. Kinda necessary in solo player. As monster Ballon needed for the extra penetration and weapon spell damage for the damage, no mythic item instead of the back bar of attachment nice stuff for a little bit more burst damage not really necessary but it fits in very well with this playstyle since i don't have anything otherwise on the back bar because pariah needs to be on both bars don't play it on the back bar it doesn't make any sense we have to have it on both bars otherwise it's not worth it armor types with three heavy two light and two medium with four impen two sturdy and one well fitted you can also put more into sturdy since we gain with Persing Cold more block mitigation obviously, full prismatic is obviously best in slot, full infuse on the jury, no magicka or stamina recovery needed here. As a non-vampire we can go with full weapon spare damage glyphs. Now front bar, no ice stuff anymore, it's not worth it on the front bar, on your damage bar. Since the person code changes, go with lightning stuff, gives you 12% more direct damage, so basically almost everything except of your dots we get empowered. In sharpen for extra pen, charge is also possible here with the poison damage chart for the poison sense effect and back bar with hash nice stuff in defending with the escape is points. Quick look on the skills, front bar growing swarm for minor wool, 5% more damage and a powerful bleed damage dot, deep fissure for minor major breach and a ton of damage, crushing shock is spare, bird of prey, snare removal, mage expedition and even gives minor berserk 5% more damage just slotted on the front bar, lotus blossom for the 12% crit rate, also extra healing, dawnbreak of smiting, a must have here, 
That's our own ECC, since I don't use Arctic Blast, Contingency, or anything else which can stun your opponents. So that's the downside of Polar Wind, but works even with Dawn Baker as our only CC. Backed by Inesas to proc the Vatashinai stuff, and also for the three powerful status effects. Especially Chill deals a ton of damage on Wardens, you know it, thanks to Glacial Presence. Increases damage of your Chill status effect by flat, in this case 589, but this value gets increased if I'm buffed with a Weapon Spell Damage buff. So it's basically like another small proc set. Blue Betty for Major Sorcery and Brutality. Also Purchase and gives a ton of Magicka Recovery, bigger as healing over time. And for Minor Resolve, 3k Armor, Ice Fortress, Resistance buff, also gives Minor Protection, Polar Wind. Look at the tooltip. 10k and that's not even buffed so without minor toughness heats like crazy even the healing over time is really really nice then as defense ultimate healing thicket alternative if you need uh, something more aggressive go with northern storm here gives also major protection no contingency so no scribing skill needed for this build but i definitely use contingency on my stamina warden so stay tuned for that race Danma, my favorite race, weapon spell damage, flame resistance, magic and stamina, go with Nord for the extra resistance, Breton for cost reduction, high elf should also be possible, but then you will lose max stamina, Khajiit should be also possible, but in my opinion Breton and Danma should be the best choice here. Bundus Diatonag, even as non-vampire needed, the magical recovery, smoke behind for the extra stamina and magical recovery, 43 points of health, the rest into magica, like this I'm at 32k HP unbuffed, with minor toughness, should be around at 35k HP, yes. Under 20k Magicka and 17k Stamina, the reason is I do not have the Undaunted Metal, the Undaunted Passive, fully skilled. If you have it, you should have easily over 20k Magicka and 17k Stamina. We need at least 35k HP, otherwise Polar Wind will obviously not heal that much, because it scales with your max HP. Potion, the Tricer Potion, CP is pretty basic with Daddy Aim, Roar through Strikes, and two damage mitigation CPs, Ironclad, and do a sweep buff. Red CP is sustained by Suffering, Pain, Refuge, Slippery, and Celebrity. If you want to, swap out Slippery for Survival Instincts, should help you with your stamina sustain, but I always play with high ping, Slippery is a game changer for me. Rotation, first of all, pre buff yourself with Lotus, Ice Fortress, Blue Betty, also Polar Wind, and Vigor. Start with Elisas, make sure to be close for the Vitation Eye stuff, then Deep Fissure, into Going Swarm, Dawnbreaker, into Crushing Shock. That's it with another PvP bit, what do you think about the new set? I really like it, it's a juicy, nice proc set. Stay tuned for a ton of more PvP content for the new update 43. Thanks for watching, have a nice day and see you guys in the next one. Peace.